I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. The United States Air Force, you think of it in terms of fighter pilots or bomber pilots, the heroism of the Second War or the B-52 over Vietnam, the B-52 over Mesopotamia. Set it aside. The U.S. Air Force is transforming itself, at least in terms of training and hiring, into the U.S. drone force. This I take from a new piece at military.com by Oriana Pollock, who covers air war. Oriana, the U.S. Air Force is not apologetic about this. It's looking for pilots. It now has active duty pilots, 700 active duty pilots and sensor operators, and 300 additional guard and reserve pilots operating drones. This is an air combat command. This has been expanding these last 15 years. Has it now been accepted that this is the Air Force of the future, that drones will be its responsibility? And is it taking that and spending money on it, or is it still pasting it together according to the war fighting demands? Good evening to you. Good evening. Well, we know that they are going to be expanding and expanding rapidly. Um, their Air Combat Command at least wants to add at least 3,000 personnel uh, into the drone enterprises, they say, the remotely piloted aircraft. And a lot of changes are coming up, but it is due to their own excursion of expanding their own RPA pilots, which is exactly what they want to do. They're looking at eight different new bases to host a couple of units in the next a few years. Uh, like I said, it's 3,000 people, and it's going to expand quite rapidly to various sites across the country. Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, Tyndale Air Force Base, Florida, Vandenberg, California, Shaw, where is Shaw? Air Force Base, is that California? And uh, these expansion facilities, the other sites you mentioned, Davis, Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona, Moody Air Force Base in Georgia, Mountain or Air, Home or Air Force Base, Idaho, Ophid, Nebraska, and Shaw is in South Carolina, not in California. Those expansions, does that mean building? Does that mean adding personnel, new commands? I mean, is this like a wartime scenario where all of a sudden the um, a farm boys show up in the field and they put a barracks up? Is that what's going on? Well, not exactly. It's more about the training, which is what they're trying to influence, and that's exactly what's being expanded on. They want to hone the training because it's it's a whole new world out there, even though that drones have been around for the last 15 years or so. But they want to expand on the training. Some pilots have been saying for the last couple of years that the demand is so high, and now they're flying almost 60 to 70 caps a day, which is what their uh, uh, comparable sorties are. And so sometimes the training is happening right there in, in, their, in their seats that they have to fly a mission and also train at the exact same time. And what the Air Force wants to do is they want to take that back a little bit uh, and have that training be first and the primal step into how a pilot, somebody who might be an F-16 pilot gum- coming back into the RPA cockpit, so to speak, and they want them to know exactly what it is they are doing instead of training and flying at the exact same time, which is why the expansion is so important to them. I'm trying to picture this. Are we looking at an Air Force that's going to segregate these people fly are, fly fighters and bombers and these people fly drones, or are they going to have to do both? Everybody's going to have to do both. Well, it's not necessarily looked at it that way. It's more so that people who may be retiring from flying F-16s for so many years, and they might be still not wanting to leave the Air Force, so to speak, so they might just, you know, get into a different seat. They might still have that flying experience, but now the flight is going to be controlled over a different system, which would be the right. distributed common ground system and watching watching from the sky instead of being li- live right there. But that means you live in a trailer, right? I've seen a little bit of what the drones look like. You go to work and there are trailers around one Air Force base I saw and there are conditioned trailers. It's not torture. But you're sitting in a seat that looks like a video game. It looks like a, the original video game, say, that you could find in Atlantic City. And you sit there and you're operating at great remove, sometimes armed, sometimes surveillance, and you're doing this for X number of hours a day. Is that the same person who could go out and fly a jet aircraft? Is that the same person? Um, it might very well be. It might very well be somebody who has just flip-flopped those roles. Um, it wouldn't be in sync as to one hour I'm flying an F-16 right, right. Or, or whatnot. But it's like I said, it's it's somebody who's who's wanting to continue that. But service. could they ever? Are they going to recruit people who only sit in that trailer? That's what I'm getting at. Are they imagining an air force that doesn't actually fly planes that flies drones? 
Oh, yes. I mean, that is absolutely happening. They are taking people even in transition of recruitment right now. Mm -hmm. They're looking for people who do some of these more futuristic roles, such as uh, RPA pilots and cyber operators, and they're going straight into it. And that recruiting, does that include the Air Force Academy? Do we know? I mean, this is about education, I understand. Training, retraining. Do you, you get to wear a flight suit and have those cool, cool patches on your arm. Do you, do you have all the gimmicks? You do still have all the gimmicks as a, as a drone pilot, as they say. Uh, we go to what are drones uh, good for? Well, they're good for battlefields. Uh, our, Ariana tells us that not only are there drones out there that are deadly, being used by the enemy, but also there's a drone defender that's already been successful. Uh, what is a drone defender? What does it look like, Ariana? Well, the drone defender made by Battelle is a rail gun uh, which sends out radio waves to the electronic warfare element of everything um, that sends out uh, stopping radio waves that basically brings down uh, any kind of uh, small aircraft, small UAV flying, maybe some of those prop aircraft. And uh, the, that's something that's being used. Um, even there have been reports of it being used widely in Iraq um, to bring down enemy drones, something that's smaller and not as sophisticated as what the United States has. But still, nonetheless, very, it's good to have something as the drone defender on our I'm side. looking at a, a photograph accompanying your story. Uh, there's a very fit young man with dark glasses looking kind of like a movie star. And he's got what looks to be a rifle, except for the end bit is different. One looks like it has a, I guess that's an odd kind of server unit hanging there. And then it has a sawtooth tig- uh, sawtooth uh, swordfish sticking out from the top of it. That's a drone defender I'm looking at now, but he's using it like a, like a rifle. Yes, that's that's the element of it. Is that you are having people right on the ground? They're pointing it up to the sky because it, it's an element of surprise. Is how the enemy has been using it, uh, especially from ISIS, as um, that story notes. That you know, two Peshmerga soldiers had a, a enthusiast drone from ISIS flown over, and it was kind of a Trojan horse of which they brought it down. But then when they came up to it, it had it had blown up and it had killed them. Right. And that's what they want to prevent: is things like this happening. Are the, so is the Air Force training? people to use a drone defender are we getting unit i mean it's like a, it's kind of like an anti aircraft unit you know instead of a german uh, mounting the 88 and pointing at the at the 8th air force they're mounting drone defenders i wonder if one has been used in a movie yet it'd be really cool to pull out and and shoot a tesla wouldn't it <laughs> it's just, it's just, it, now this is for small drones or could this bring down a predator an m1 an mq1 mq9 is it is it that powerful it may not be that powerful. It is. It doesn't have that kind of sophistication. Now, the MQ-1 and the MQ-9 are being up, updated constantly, and they are flying at a vast altitude, as right, the MQ-1 right. can fly over 25,000 feet and the MQ-9 over 50,000 feet. So okay. it's something that's, that's spotted relatively easily in the air, of which that rail gun, as you see, it doesn't extend super far, but it can bring down something in, in a close vicinity. So they're looking at small packages. All right, mm-hmm. fine. We have, ro- uh, we, have, we have defensive mechanisms. We have long range. But now we move over to Bomber Command. I mentioned the 8th Air Force. I've read enough stories of bombing over Europe and bombing over Japan. It was an enormously deadly business. The casualty rate taken by the Air Force far exceeded any other service in the Second War. The Bomber Command is still very proud of what it does, and it flies really cool planes. One is called the B-2, and there's a debate now underway, Oriana points out, between human bombers, homo sapiens, and drones. And it looks like the Air Force is not making a decision, is it? Well, as of right now, the contract that the Air Force has with Northrop Grumman, who was awarded the contract for the B-21 long-range strike bomber, uh, the element is to keep an unmanned position open. They're open to the idea of having an element of which somebody unmanned can fly a B-21. Now, no one has any has actually seen schematics for the aircraft, how big it may be, and how that could be operated, but uh, some pilots who flew the B-2 uh, over Libya and Iraq and Afghanistan say, keep, keep the man in the loop. Uh, B-2 is the plane we have now. B-21 is the future bomber, right? Future, And they've right. named it. They called it the Raider for, yes. for Doolittle's Raiders. Fine. All right. So they're right now still debating. I, I, have the contracts gone out to build an all-robot bomber? Does that exist? 
as of right now, that does not exist. Again, it's the Air Force knowing that they still want to keep the man in the loop of flying, but possibly having the... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait, wait. Isn't a man in a loop or a woman in a loop when they're in a trailer and home and air, air base? Is not that in the loop if you're flying a drone? Well, for a drone, yes, but for, for the B-21, I'm, I mean somebody who's actually in the cockpit. But what they're debating is to have somebody also being able to control something from not within the cockpit, from, from a remote location. They want a capability that could have both, and that's what's making the B-21 dialogue very interesting at this time. B-21. So right now, the Air Force has not made a decision, but they've asked the builders to prepare a robot capability they just haven't asked the builders to go all robot. Is that where we are? That, and, That's where we and are. And this is an argument in the Air Force. And the bomber command says we have to... And how many, how many people on board does the bomber command want for the, for the raider? Well, it will... It, like its predecessor, the B-2 uh, Spirit, it, it would likely also have two pilots as well. All right. Uh, slowly, we're, we're dealing with the Air Force's reluctance to give up the, dr the bombers to the robots. But right now they've given up the, what, the fighter aircraft to the robots, and they're staffing up at the Air Force. So if, you have a, if you're very good at PlayStation and you're 12 years old, as I was once upon a time in casting your eyes in the Air Force academies, uh, um, plans, you know, to apply to the Air Force Academy. Consider, if you're really good at the PlayStation, there's a role for you. Oriana Pollock reporting on Air War for Military.com. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.